Okay, the Honourable Member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. As we conclude third reading of uh, Bill C-309, I'd like to take the opportunity to once again express my sincere thanks to my colleagues in this House and to all those who have been involved in shaping and championing this bill an act to establish Gender Equality Week. Monsieur le Président, laissez-moi prendre les dernières minutes de ce débat pour souligner le travail de trois hommes qui, parmi beaucoup d'autres, m'ont inspiré au cours de mon travail sur le projet de loi C-309. Our Prime Minister, who proudly and regularly describes himself as a feminist, has challenged men to do more to support women and Canadians of minority gender identity and expression in the effort to achieve gender equality. And Mr. Speaker, he leads by example, having appointed the first gender-balanced cabinet in Canada's history, and he empowers his ministers to systematically apply gender equality and equity considerations to both their domestic and their international work. Mr. Speaker, day by day, much of the credit also goes to our amazing parliamentary staffers right here on Parliament Hill. My own executive and legislative assistant, Adrian Zita Bennett, proudly hails from Mississauga Lakeshore, and he's done a lot of the heavy lifting in the stakeholder consultations and in the drafting of the preambular paragraphs of Bill C-309. As a young professional, Adrian is passionate about social justice, and he has pledged himself to doing what he can to help bring full gender equality to our country. And the third man, Mr. Speaker, is Glenn Canning. Members of this chamber will remember the Retea Parsons tragedy. Retea was a Nova Scotia teenager who was sexually assaulted by four males at a home near Halifax in November of 2011. And she took her own life on April 4th, 2013, following months of bullying, cyber abuse, and victim blaming. Glenn Canning, Mr. Speaker, is Retea's father. I had the honor of meeting him recently at a fundraiser for Interim Place, which is a local women's shelter in Mississauga, where he told Retea's heartbreaking story. And today, four years after Retea's death, Mr. Canning is an activist and a writer courageous and tireless, who is doing what he can to stop sexual violence in Canada. I spoke with him by telephone yesterday, Mr. Speaker, and I asked him if there was a message that he would like to relay to this House and to Canadians. And he told me that one of the most important goals is to equip young men with the right tools and the knowledge to be able to stop acts of sexual violence or harassment against women and girls when they witness them. If Bill C-309 will help to ensure that every man and every boy in Canada knows about Retea Parsons, her story, and other stories like hers, it will, for that reason alone, have done a great deal of good. Mr. Speaker, I wanted to highlight these three examples of men who have stepped up and are taking action because, in my view, it is very important that, in increasing numbers, men become champions of all aspects of gender equality. Sexual and intimate partner violence, the gender wage gap, the continued disparity of opportunity for women in the STEM careers and male-dominated fields such as law enforcement or aviation or the armed forces, the plight of Canada's Indigenous women, and numerous other areas as outlined in Bill C-309's preambular paragraphs. Mr. Speaker, women and Canadians of minority, gender identity and expression simply cannot and should not do this work alone. Many men are already actively involved, Mr. Speaker, through the He For She campaign and through important community-based efforts across our country. These men, in turn, will inspire more men and boys to join them, as there is much more work to be done and more help needed. It is my aspiration that Bill C-309, an act to establish Gender Equality Week, will serve as a platform to support this work through a focused national discussion each year not only to raise awareness among Canadians and to take stock of the remaining challenges, but through stories like Retea's to emphasize that the status quo is simply untenable. We must continue to take action on gender equality. Mr. Speaker, I've had the great privilege of working on this bill with colleagues from all parties in this chamber over the past several months, and I look forward to engaging with our colleagues in the other place in the months ahead. Once again, Mr. Speaker, my sincerest of thanks to all supporters of Bill C-309. I'm grateful for everything they are doing to champion this very important cause. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.